Okay, for this section, we're going to be talking about the cross product, which is, which is something new, okay? Um, the, we've talked about the dot product, but there's another one called the cross product, okay? And so for two vectors that are in three-dimensional space, when you do the cross product, it's defined as this. Now, this is a lot to remember, okay? So what they say is that instead of doing all of that, you can do... Um, the determinant of i, j, k, and um, all of the components of a, and then all of the components of the second vector. So the first vector is one row, the second vector is another row, and i, j, k goes at the top. Now it does matter which one's which. So whatever is in your first vector, that's going to be that second row. Whichever is the second vector, that's going to be the third row. It has to go in that order, okay? because you'll see that it's not commutative. So if you have it in one order, you will get something different than if you did it in the other order. Most times, I mean, it's coincidence if it does come out the same, but not normally. Now, there is a method of finding a determinant of a three by three matrix, and it's called um, using minors. And so what they do is they take this, and since this is a column with I, they basically cover the column with I and color the co cover the, co uh, the row with I, and they say I will be multiplied by the determinant of this, which is exactly what's right there, okay? Then if you cover the row with J and the column with J, vice versa, I pointed them on. So this is a column, this is the row. Notice that you get J times these guys, okay? Which are the people here. Then if you cover the column for J in the row, I mean the column for K in the row for K, you end up with the determinant for these guys times K. And these things go in this order. The first one is positive, the second one is negative, the third one is positive. If I had a bigger um, matrix, I would keep in that, that, that pattern, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, so on and so forth, okay? Now, Note that in order for you to find a determinant of a two by two, you're just doing the cross multiplication here, cross multiplication there, and then subtracting. And you do have to go this way first and then the other way, okay? Now, I don't like that method. It's a lot. Not only do I have to like rewrite everything, but then I gotta find the determinant of this, find the determinant of that, find the determinant of that. It just takes a long time, okay? So there is another method and that method is to just rewrite the first two columns. So notice that this column and this column, I just rewrote. And then what you do is you multiply these three. You have to have three in order to create a little row, like a diagonal like I am. So notice this doesn't have three and that doesn't have three. This doesn't have three and that doesn't have three. So I don't use those. And all of these, whatever that product would be is gonna be positive, positive, positive. Because notice when you go down, this is positive, right? But when you come up, this is negative, okay? So this is one guy, I can't do that. This is two guys, I can't do that. But this diagonal, I can. This diagonal has three people. This diagonal has three people. This one does not, and neither does that. So when you go from the bottom to the top, all of those are going to have negatives in front, okay? And then you just combine everything together and you'll get the determinant, okay? So this is the method that I prefer. If you prefer to use minors, go for it. If that's how you did it in college algebra and you wanna continue with that, that is a-okay. I'm not forcing you to do it my way. I'm just letting you know that I find that easier, the alternative way. Um, and so that's the way I'm gonna use. So. For this vector and this vector, for part A, they want us to find V cross W. So what that means is I'm going to do um, I, J, K. And then I'm going to do V because V is in front. So two, one, negative one. And then W is in the back. So negative three, four, one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite the first two rows. So two, one, negative three, four. And then I'm gonna start. And I like to do positive and negative. So I'm gonna do the positives in green. And then I'm gonna do the negatives in red. 
Remember, you need three in order to draw the diagonal. So what do I get? I get I times one times one. That is one I. And it's positive in front. This is gonna have a positive in front. J times negative one times negative three. That's gonna be a positive three J. K times two times four plus, that's gonna be a positive eight K. Now for the negatives, this is gonna have a negative in front. Negative three times one times K is negative three K, negative. Four times negative one times I is negative four I. <coughs> Excuse me. Negative one times two times J is two J. And so now it's just a matter of combining the like terms. So I have one I, really that's plus four I. So I have five I, I have three J plus another, oops, not that one, that's K, not J. Here's my J. So positive three minus two is gonna give me a positive one J. And then my K is gonna be positive eight, um, that's I, and positive three. So I'm gonna get positive 11 K. And you can put it in the IJK form since they gave it to me in component form. You could also write it in component form. And sometimes when you do have it in IJK form, they might not have the one there just because coefficients are automatically understood to be ones when there's nothing written, okay? So then now B wants me to do the reverse, most likely to just prove that they're not always gonna be the same. So I'm gonna do I, J, K, and then W is gonna go on the top because W is first. So negative three, four, one. And then V is gonna go at the bottom, two, one, negative one. And I'm gonna rewrite the first rows, not that, just the first two. Negative three, four, two, one. And so then I'm gonna go down and do the positives. And so then I get, um, what do I get? I get negative four I, I get positive two J and I get positive negative three K. Then now in this direction, I get minus eight K. This direction I get minus one I and then in this direction, I get minus three J. And if I combine my like terms, the I's first, negative five I, the J's next, so negative one J, and then the K's next, negative 11 um, K. And so notice that this one is negative five, negative one, negative 11, which is not exactly the same, these will have the same magnitude, but they're going in opposite directions, okay? Now, let's see. They want us to do V cross V and then W cross W. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. Oh, I jumped to D. I need to do C first. So let's do the three by three matrix. And then I'll need two rows to combine. And then a three by three matrix and then two rows at least to combine. Okay, just trying to make sure I have enough room. So I'm doing V cross V. So I, J, K, I, J, and then V is two, one, negative one, two, one, negative one, two, one, two, one. So then let's see V. So for the positives, we're gonna go downward. And so then I get um, negative one I, and then plus negative two J plus two K. And then I'll go this way to go upward. So I get minus two K, and then I get minus a negative one I, and then I get minus a negative two J. 
And so if I combine those, um, negative i and plus one i means I have zero i's. And then 2j, negative 2j plus 2j means I have zero j's. And then 2k minus 2k means I'm going to have zero k's. So this is 0, 0, 0, or just the zero vector. Okay. Now let's see what happens if we do W with W. So I, J, K, and then repeat I and J. Now W was negative 3, 4, 1. So negative 3, 4, negative 3, 4. And we're going to do the same process. So go downward in the positives. So that's going to give me 4i negative 3 or plus a negative 3j plus a negative 12k. And then in red, going up, we get um, minus a negative 12k um, minus a 4i minus a negative 3j. So then we have 4i and 4i, negative 4i. We have negative 3j and positive 3j. And then we have negative 12k and positive 12k. So it's the same thing. We end up with the zero vector, which is this as well, OK? Um, if it asks you for i, j, k form, then it would be literally 0i plus 0j plus 0k. But normally, this is going to be an option because when uh, terms are missing, we don't usually write 0. We just don't write anything. But you can't say it equals and then leave it blank, right, because there's no variables. You have to write something. And so normally, we just write the 0 vector. And that usually is an option inside my labs plus. If it's not, then they may allow you to enter it into component form. And if not, if they really desperately wanted an IJK form, you're just going to have to put zeros for I, J, and K. Now we have some properties, OK? So we already established that when you do the cross product in one direction, you're going to get the opposite sign of the cross product in another direction, OK? Some more rules that apply is if you're going to do, it's like a distributive property. You have a product and then you have a sum inside. So you're going to take this and product it with this number, then take this and product it with that number, and then add the two things together. Um, now here, this is a little interesting because now you're mixing up a dot product with a cross product. And so remember, in a dot product, a cross product will give you a vector, but a dot product this vector dot product with another vector will give you a scalar. And so there will not be any IJKs in a scalar. And so what happens is, is you replace the row with the IJK with the values or the component values of U. And so then notice that there's no more IJKs. So all of this would be nothing but a bunch of numbers. So when you do the um, determinant process of it, you're just going to end up with a regular number, OK? And that's exactly what is to be expected of a dot product, OK? Now here, if you have a constant multiplied by a vector, you can take that constant. And it doesn't matter whether it's multiplied by this vector or whether it's multiplied by the other vector or whether it's just multiplied by the cross product after the fact. Um, they're all going to be equivalent. And similarly, um, you could also rewrite this. So instead of doing u dot v cross the w, so instead of finding this vector and then taking the dot product with u, you could also find this dot product and then, or I'm sorry, this cross product and then take that dot product with w. And coincidentally, when they proved it, um, it does come out to equal the same all the time. So it's very interesting there, that relationship. Um, now, if the cross product is equal to zero, then that means that A and B are parallel. So usually they're the same number or they're opposite directions of the same number. Um, and then if the cross product is not equal to zero, then um, 
A and B is orthogonal to both A and B. So the new vector A cross B is going to be perpendicular to A and it's gonna be perpendicular to B. And that's a good and interesting thing, property to have when you get into vector calculus, okay? So you will definitely be using cross products when you get to vector calculus, because it's always nice to have angles that are either parallel or orthogonal. And so this cross product will come back to us, okay? So then they want us to go ahead and do this example where they give us two ve three vectors, right? U, V, and W. And they want us to do the U dot V cross W. And then they want us to do three U cross V, okay? And so we'll do both of them. I think I have enough room to do both here. So remember for this dot product, that rule says that I'm going to basically have the components of U, then the components of V, and then the components of W. So for the first one, I'll just call it A, um, and then call this one B. So for A, I'm gonna get um, three, negative one, two, negative four, 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 one, four, and one. And so then I'm gonna rewrite the first two rows. And then I'm gonna use my colors. So going downward, we get positive 12, positive, negative four, positive, um, negative, what is that? 16 times two is 32. And then here in the other diagonal, I get negative um, eight, negative 16 times three, I think it's 48, yes. And then um, negative positive four. And so what do we get here? We have 12 minus four minus 32 minus eight minus 48 minus four. So I get the value negative 84, which is a scalar, right? When you take a dot product with another vector, you're gonna get a scalar. Okay, now for part B, um, I'm going to do, it's a cross product only. So I'm gonna do the I, the J and the K and then I'm gonna use three U. So here's U, I'm gonna multiply everybody by three. So nine, negative three, and six. And then I'm gonna put V. So negative V, four, and four. Now repeat my two um, rows, or I'm sorry, my two columns. And then I start doing the green and red. Um, it helps me with the green and red just cause I'm visual and it helps me decipher. So I don't just have a bunch of circles everywhere. So that means I'm gonna have positive of negative 12i, positive um, negative 24j, positive um, 36k. Now the negatives. So I have negative um, positive 12k, I have negative 24i, and I have negative 36j. And so if I combine my like terms there, the i's together will give me negative 36i. The j's together will give me negative 60. And then the k's together will give me positive 24. And so if they want the i, j, k form, there it is. If they want the component form, because they did give me the problem in component form, um, you would just write negative 36, negative 60, and positive 24. Okay, so another example says, find a vector orthogonal to both u and v. We just read that U cross V is orthogonal to both U and V. So literally when they ask you this question, they're not asking you to do anything special other than just U cross V. So I'm gonna do exactly what I've been doing before. U must be the first one and then V the second. And so then I get, um, oh, I need to rewrite my first two columns. I 
and then do my colors. So I have positive negative 4i, positive negative 9j, positive 8k. Then I'm going to do these guys, which are the negatives. So I get negative 3k, negative 12i, and negative 8j. So then what do I get in my final answer? I have negative 16i. I have um, negative 21. Oh, nope, I'm sorry, negative 17j. And positive 5k. Or since those are in component form, negative 16, negative 17, and 5 in component form. Now, here's something interesting, okay? So it says, if you have a parallelogram, which is a two-dimensional object, okay? And so to hit both of the ideas here, I drew a three-dimensional figure and then I tried to shade in the parallelogram. So the parallelogram is the whole thing, okay? And if I want to find the area of um, the parallelogram, it's only the area that's created by the three vectors which create the front of the object. So you'll have three vectors. You'll have one vector going in this direction, one vector going in another direction, and then another one that kind of gives you the depth of the, of the um, object, right? And so really you're only gonna use the two that represent like the length and the width, not the one that represents the depth, okay? So in order for you to find the area of that, you just need to find the cross product of this, uh, the magnitude of that cross product for these two vectors, A and B. Now, if you do have the whole parallelogram and you wanna find the volume of it, then you definitely are gonna to have to use the um, depth, right? And so we find out that this is the absolute value because the volume does need to be a positive number. Um, it's the absolute value of A dot product with B cross C, okay? And we already know that there's another way you can write it. You can write it with A cross B and then dot with C because of that formula that we had here. So when you do it in this order, you could also put the first two as the cross product and then dot the C. And that might be helpful because um, if you are already finding A cross B um, from this part, then you would have already known what A cross B is and you don't have to go doing extra work finding another cross product, which obviously you can see it takes a little while. Okay, so it may be easier to do that second version of the formula than the first version, especially if you've already found the area of the parallelogram. So now this problem here is a good example. Um, it says find the area of the pillar, blah, blah, blah. Find the area of the parallelogram with corner P1 and adjacent sides um, P1 to P2 and P1 to P3. And so I tried to graph it in my three-dimensional space as much as I possibly could, but it's of course gonna look a little crazy. So P1 is at the origin, zero, zero, zero. P2 is going to be out four units for X. It's gonna be out one unit for Y, but then it has to go up one unit. So I know this looks like it's matching like, you know, three and a half and one, but it's not. It's actually at four and one, which is here. And then you have to imagine that it's lifted up off my paper, like it's lifted up off my paper, that one unit, okay? So you've got this here and then the point is like lifted off. Now notice where my fingers are. When I lift it up like that, um, my fingers are more, as far as a two dimensional space, look like it's above where my pencil is, which is why this is where it was on the ground. When I lifted it up, it looks like it's up there, okay? So it's my best attempt at drawing a three-dimensional dot on a two-dimensional paper, right? But now for the other point, it's gonna be negative one for X. So back here, 
a negative one for y and right there on the plane and it does not have a z coordinate so it is lying on that flat surface think of the x and the y as a piece of paper that's flat and the z is like a pole that's coming out from the paper which will tell you how high up or how low down to go okay so if i draw the rays from p1 to p2 uh, and i draw the ray from p1 to p3 what happens is you create a parallelogram or you create a um yeah parallelogram with these images so you have this side here this side here these are the same directions and then this here which is the same direction as that and so you have this like rectangular um it's called a rectangle it's called a parallelogram because i don't know what the angle is here the angle is there the angle is there it's not necessarily a right angle because this thing is like lifted up right so it's not flat it's lifted up and because it's lifted up um it's not going to have a right angle in there okay so what's going to happen is i'm trying to um get this area here Okay, and so then I know that I can figure out A, you can label whichever one you want. So I'm gonna label P1 to P2 as A, the vector A, and I'm gonna label P1 to P3 as the vector B, okay? And so A, I can find the position vector by taking the P2 minus the P1. So four minus zero, which is four, one minus zero, which is one, one minus zero, which is one. For B, I can take P3 minus P1. So negative one minus zero is negative one, negative one minus zero, negative one, zero minus zero is zero. And so then if I wanna know the area of this um, like rectangular parallelogram, um, <clears throat> then I can um, just do the cross product of them. So A cross B. And so then I get I, J, K, and then A has to be on the top and then B below that. And so if I repeat my two rows, um, let me do my colors. So I get, ah, that becomes zero I. That becomes negative one J. And this becomes negative four K. And then the other direction, so it becomes minus negative 1k, negative 1j, ah, or I'm sorry, negative 1, 1, and i is negative 1i. And then 0, 4, and j is negative 0j. So what do I get? Um, zero plus one is going to be one I, um, J. Negative one and minus zero is negative one J. And then negative four plus one is negative three K. And so in component form, that would be, or yeah, I'm going to put it in component form. One, negative one, negative three. Okay. And why do I want it in a component form? Because in order for me to find the area, I have to find the magnitude of that cross product, which means I need to find the square root of one squared plus negative one squared plus negative three squared, which gives me the square root of one plus one plus nine, which is the square root of 11. And normally they'll ask you for it in a decimal form, so it's about 3.32 square units, right? So units squared, because area is always square units. Volume is always cubic units, okay? Or cubed units, same thing. But that's the end of this section. Those are all the kinds of examples that you'll see in the My Labs Plus. So you should be able to complete that homework assignment. And that is the end of all the content that we are going to learn in pre-calculus.
Yay, we made it. So after this is gonna be your last unit test and then it's gonna be the review and the final exam. So this is actually bye-bye for the last um, video that I will be recording. <laughs>